just listening to the Lord in prayer yesterday and today as to what to share. I, you know, it's Mother's Day and then it's, you know, different days that we recognize and we don't try to go cross-threaded with culture. We see those as opportunities to, while we're thinking about certain things like mothers, we want to speak to that and, and help shape that and, and deepen our understanding of what, what mothers and motherhood is. So we don't ignore what culture is doing, yet at the same time, culture doesn't necessarily dictate to us what we speak and preach. And so any time Mother's Day or Father's Day comes around, there's this war on the inside of preachers and pastors as to what we're going to say. And, you know, I think you could probably go to the Internet and Google click on notes for Mother's Day sermon or notes for Father's Day sermon or notes for anniversary sermons or, you know, that's all available, but I I don't ever want to just do uh, the status quo. I really want us to hear hear from the Holy Spirit. And I said, Lord, I'll, I'll, I'll speak about motherhood and mothers if that's really what you want me to speak on. Kind of like what Ann was sharing about the worship team that we're prepared, but the Holy Spirit can always change course. But I also had this conversation with the Lord. I just had this knowing that I think he wants us to maybe hear some things we haven't heard before or look at this from another angle, that he wants to expand our understanding of really what motherhood is and how important mothers are. And so I had kind of a rush of thoughts that maybe didn't seem real connected previously to me, and maybe they won't to you either, Um, but I think the Lord wants to continue to challenge our understanding of really what it means to be a mother, and likewise for us as men, what it means to be a father. You know, you can be a father without having children. It's if you carry the heart of God, you are, you can interact fatherly, uh, or you can just interact however you're used to interacting. But you don't necessarily have to have children to be fatherly, and it's the same with mothers. There's there's there is a stature that is motherly and oftentimes on Mother's Day we just recognize all the ladies that have kids Uh, a lot of ladies that have kids they aren't mothers Uh, and their kids are really getting raw into the deal because they're stuck in a home with a lady who simply has kids but has never risen to the posture and the calling of motherhood And there are other women who don't have children who can arise to the posture, to the status, to the, I believe it's an exalted privilege to rise to that place. And so this morning I want to acknowledge you. Um, I think this is the most wonderful of congregations because I've seen so many of you through the years rise to becoming mothers. Some of you had kids and you were not maternal at all. And even though you had kids, you had to become a mother. Does that make sense? And so I'm thinking of mother, motherhood, if you will, as this calling. And it's more than simply a function. We kind of addressed that in one of those humorous clips this morning. Um, You know, all the things that the lady of the house does that aren't appreciated. And it's in the context of mothers. And 
But that's not just a mother, the mother who does all the stuff. Um, that's part and parcel of the deal. But how many of you know you could, you could hire a cleaning lady? You could hire a maid. You could, you could hire all that out and, uh, and not do it because it's, it's not the doing of the stuff that makes a woman a mother. It's that, it's that place of the heart, the place in the Lord that makes you a mother. Fathers have their stuff to overcome, and likewise mothers. The scripture says to him or her that overcomes, I will give authority over the nations. And I think one of the great things that is an obstacle and overcoming offense that you women need to overcome is that Jezebel thing that wants to keep you, that spirit that wants to keep you from being a godly mother and turn you into the sensual queen. Jezebel is basically witchcraft wrapped up in sexual seduction. And as a mother... You are a guardian in your home standing against any witchcraft influence that wants to come into your home and any sensual seduction that wants to come into your home. You are a watchman on the wall with your, uh, of your home. Now, I'm not taking anything away from men. I'm not minimizing the husband and the father's role to be a watchman on the wall as well. But moms, you're not followers. You are leaders who knows what it means to be not only a woman and a godly woman, but a mother. Um, nature gives us a great example that... I don't know if it's the kingdom of the bears or the phylum or what, what exactly the scientific designation is for bears. But how many of you heard the phrase, a mama bear? You don't mess with those kids because that, that girl bear instinctively knows her job is she's a watchman on the wall of this invisible bubble and nothing that is going to harm her baby bears is going to come in. Even Papa Bear. Think about that. Papa Bears sometimes eat their own young, use their own young for food. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, come on up. It doesn't say Papa Bear. The saying is mama bear. Um, so I have someone's horse, and she's pregnant, and she gave birth on Monday at the vet clinic, and the vet won't call you for 24, 48 hours just to make sure that the baby is well. Well, she rejected the baby for almost two days, and they had a hard time corralling her to get the baby to nurse and things like that. And then she finally called me Wednesday and said everything was great. So I'm like, awesome. And she's a third time mom, so they can't understand why she would reject her baby. So I bring her home Saturday, yesterday, um, and put her in the stall. And I know and that this is, the mom or the baby. this is the mom and the baby. I bring them home and I put them in the stall. And at night, I go to bring the horses in to put beside her. So I put my stallion next to her, who's been next to her for the last year, other than the last two weeks when she's been gone. And he starts just, <laughs> you know, she goes ballistic and starts hurting her foal away in such a violent manner that I am 
distressed because I'm thinking, how am I going to get in there to do this? And she starts charging the stall and rearing up and biting at him and doing everything she can to protect this foal that three days ago she didn't want. So that mother instinct kicked in. And of course, we fixed it all. But it's a great example of how just three days ago, she's like, I don't want you. And then all of a sudden, she's like, but no one else is having you. And I will kill whoever comes near my foal. And it was pretty fantastic to see, but at the same time, terrifying, because you're thinking, she's going to kill her old foal trying to kill this other horse, <laughs> you know. But she did everything right. She just kept hurting him away and then attacking and hurting away and then attacking, you know, like putting him in a safe distance while she went to town at the wall, but that was violent, but it was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's a great example. It's not a bear example, which I thought we were going to get, <laughs> but a horse example. And what should we have expected from you, Jen? A horse example. Okay. <laughs> exactly. The point, the point with my example of the bear and hers as a horse is even in the natural world, there is instinctively designed into creation the difference between giving birth and being maternal. It's the same as, it's a same as the difference between siring a child and being a father to that child, okay? So ladies, Jezebel is a mixture of witchcraft and sexual seduction. Modesty and free of forbidden spiritual sexual curiosity is the opposite of that. A godly woman, a mother, is able to pinpoint the, the two primary forks in the road that your girls and boys are going to encounter. I remember when I, was a, when I was a kid, all of a sudden you're over at a party and someone produces a Ouija board. It's not okay. It's, it's curiosity of the... Uh, the occult and witchcraft stuff is not okay. Uh, culture is steeped in it. We had uh, a women's conference, and Christine, I think you did the teaching on, and her the, the, the name of her teaching was, I think, Witchcraft is Not Cool, something along that line, because it was a time where it was all these teen idol movie actors uh, there was such a surge in uh, kind of spiritual art stuff. This was just before Harry Potter, and uh, it kind of opened the door for Harry Potter because all of these moms who should be protecting their kids, protecting our families from any kind of dabbling, even in curiosity. Well, I wonder how real it is. Let's you know, eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, what's it going to hurt if I know how it works? It's going to hurt everything. Because you're opening doors, demonic doors, to all kinds of junk to come flooding into your families. And mom, you, 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 are, you, are, you are probably the primary gatekeeper paying the most attention as to what spiritual forces come into your life and come into your family's lives. Dad's not even home most of the day. He's out in the fields working. But there you are, guarding the home. Your job is not to just help your husband. It's not just to feed your kids or be their taxi service. You are a horse. <laughs> you are a bear. You're the mama horse, the mama bear who is protecting your house, your family, your life, those, and this is for those of you who don't have children, either previously or presently, you, those who have been entrusted to your care, you are guarding them from witchcraft 
and sensuality. The promise to the church in Thyatira is if they overcame Jezebel's seductions, that they would inherit authority over nations. That's why not just sexual purity in the stuff like keeping your virginity technically isn't good enough. Modesty is where we want to go. And that is one of the things that the older women are to be teaching the younger women. Hopefully the mothers are teaching the young mothers. Modesty is important. It's huge. Yet our culture says, hey, if you got it, flaunt it. What's it going to hurt? You know, flashing a little cleavage. Short shorts, Daisy Duke shorts. Uh, hey, if you got the legs, wear the shorts, culture says. Uh, that's not a mom. That's a competitor with her daughters. That's someone who still thinks there's a value in having men, uh, men's attention drawn to you to look at you lustfully in hopes that they might want you. That's a broken woman. That's not a mother. A mother is going to protect her daughters from the looks, from the invasion of glares and ogling. A mother, when she walks down the sidewalk and she sees someone scoping out her daughter, she stands in between that person and that daughter and says, you take your eyes off of my girls. They're not here for you. They don't belong to you. You don't even have permission to look at them. And then you need to look at your girls and see what they look like. See what you are permitting. See what you are promoting. See what you are advertising. Moms, you are a protector of innocence. Modesty is your best weapon. And when all of this cute cartoon witchcraft, you know, the Disney version of witchcraft, shows up with your kids, your grandkids, your nieces and your nephews, you take the posture of a prophetic mom, not a compliant mom. You are not afraid to be the mother bear that says, that is wicked in the eyes of the Lord. And he commands us to not even dabble with it or entertain it. Not entertain it. But what is it wrapped up as? Entertainment. It's a seduction. And we as godly people and you as godly moms must stand as a watchman on that wall. Yet many moms who have not arisen into this place of motherhood, they go, well, you know, it's cute. It's just a cartoon. All of this making excuses, um, choosing to be non-confrontational. Remember the mama bear. She's not afraid of the confrontation. The mama mare. The horse. She's not afraid of the confrontation. You can't be afraid of the confrontation. Now, once you identify yourself, there may be times where you need to revisit it again. I'm not saying you need to become the nag. Uh, you don't need to be the clanging gong, you know, or the ringing cymbal. You, there, there's a wisdom to it, especially when it's your grandkids, especially when it's your nieces and nephews. But when it's your own kids... If you are the mother, and sometimes we don't come into the full motherhood of this thing until everyone's got grandkids. You know, you look back and you say, boy, I made that mistake with my kids. I, I don't want my kids to make it with my grandkids. So, so now we rise up and, you know, we, we maybe haven't risen up into the motherhood that, that was needed at the time. Because, well, you know, dad says it's okay. Fooey on what dad says. As a mom, you need to be able to say fooey on what dad says if he's not holding the righteous line. If his plumb line is not righteous, it doesn't 
take away from you your obligation to demand righteousness. Well, that'll stir up a religious spirit. Moms, you have the duty, and I want you to know, it's not just the duty, but that you have the freedom to seize and not let go of the responsibility with which God has charged you to raise your children in the fear of the Lord. And if your husband bails out of the fear of the Lord, it does not relieve you of the obligation to be a God-fearing mother. Even though your boneheaded husband is dropping the ball, you're not called to drop the ball with him. You're called to stand and hold the line. You have been given children by the Lord. The Lord has lent you, really, those children really aren't yours, right? They're, they're the Lord's. He's lent you those children to steward their lives, to guard and protect them. Amen? Okay. That was kind of heavy. Everybody okay? All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> A godly mother is modest and witchcraft free. She has no identification with that whole Jezebel thing. We speak the truth in love. Speaking the truth is an expression of love. Sadly, speaking the truth often leaves the relationship at risk. But you still must speak the truth in love. So a mother is able to stand with her face into the winds of this new age. She's strong. She's this Proverbs 31 kind of gal. She's not wimpy. She's not pushed around. She stands for the Lord. She stands with the Lord. And if it means she stands alone, she stands alone. No good woman wants to stand alone. But if it comes down to that, she will stand alone. Scriptural values are eternal. They don't change with the shifting, blowing winds. Well, back in the days of the Bible, when even dabbling or entertaining witches and witchcraft was forbidden, and the sentence of even entertaining it was death. Death. Why? Because you entertain it, you open the door for all this death and destruction to come into your little sphere of influence called your home or your household. Well, they didn't have Disney back then. Thank God. Now, Walt Disney would probably be still alive. But since then, these other knuckleheads who are running the kingdom down there, the magic kingdom, they'd all be stoned. And I don't mean like with drugs. I mean like with rocks. Because they are introducing witchcraft. They're introducing... Uh, oh, what do you call it when those who've gone before you speak to you and appear to you? Ancestor worship. Uh, all of these... All of these dark arts. And they wrap it up in this cute, cool cartoon. And they desensitize you and your children and your family. They put hooks into you and your family. And Jesus, in his time of passion... He said something like this, the prince of this world is about to flex his muscles, but he has nothing in me. We want to have that to be our testimony like Jesus, that we haven't dabbled in this stuff. We haven't taken on the values 
of darkness and the demonic world or however those are represented in culture. We don't want to excuse it. We want to be that mama bear that is standing on the wall guarding and protecting all, all, her cubs from any or all of these influences. We've got to toe the line. That's what moms do. And we so appreciate it. I know a lot of what I'm doing is preaching to the choir. But I'm not here to just tell you new things. I'm also here to tell you and remind you of what you are doing well. If you've taken these stands, you are doing well. Whether you have kids or not, you can and maybe have, but if you haven't, you can arise to being a mother in the house of the Lord, a mother in your neighborhood, a mother in the lives of others that God has connected to you for you to care for. And you should not be afraid you should be fearless, like the, like the uh, angel told Joshua. Be strong and courageous. Take your stand. Standing with your face into the winds of a new age, the scriptural values are eternal. They don't change with the shifting or blowing winds. Abortion. It can't be redefined in the mind of a mother. The LGBTQ XYZ, whatever is the next letter they add to it, it's sexual perversion. Perversion is perversion. God called it perversion. You can't change what God said. It's wrong. It'll lead to death. What God has said is exactly what he meant. And a mother, because she fears God, is only concerned with obeying his word. She's not concerned with forming an opinion that is culturally relevant. She cares about one thing. What the Lord say. That's the way we live. We think of it as a, a dad, a father thing. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. That's also a mother thing. And if dad's not willing to serve the Lord, the mom rises up as his helpmeet and says, well, if you're going to be weak, then I'm going to have to be strong in the Lord. As for me and my house, sweetheart, parentheses bonehead, we will serve the Lord, period. What the Lord said, that's the way we will order this family in our house. We obey his word. We need more Rebecca's. Remember, Jacob's going to bless the wrong son in contradiction to God's word. And Rebecca said to the younger, the Lord said, now go in there and get your blessing. How am I going to do that? Well, we'll figure it out. But the blessing belongs to you according to the word of the Lord. Go get it. Well, it wasn't culturally the way it was supposed to work. Fui on culture. Rebecca, as a mother, was going to make sure the word of the Lord that was spoken to her about her children, that's all that mattered. And we're going to rustle feathers. And it's a theological debate to this day it's ruffled so many feathers. But that was a mother who stood on the word of the Lord. And you know what? Turned out pretty stinking good. Thank God it didn't go the other way. Don't make excuses why or why not. Just obey our Heavenly Father. We need more Abigails. Remember Abigail, one of the wives of King David? She basically said this, my husband may be a bonehead, but I will still honor the one that God has anointed. She was honorable. She was dedicated. She feared God. She rescued her household. 
They were set on a course for destruction. Yet she said, no, we're not going to do this. We're not going to thumb our nose at this one who's been anointed king, who's been protecting our flocks. We're going to take out cakes of raisins and dates and food, and we're going to take donkeys full of this stuff for him and his guys. Even if it means I'm going to smuggle it out of the barn into where it needs to go. Because what the Lord wants is what I want, says the mother. We need more Deborahs. Deborah with Barak. God said we're to go to war. So we're not going to waver. You can trust him. I'm confident we will prevail. I'll go with you if that's what you need. But we are going to follow the word of the Lord. You are going to follow the Lord. And if for you to follow the word of the Lord means I go with you into battle riding on a horse as a target for the enemy, I'm going to go with you if that's what you need. But we're going to honor the word of the Lord. Deborah. Courageous would be the word I would attach to Deborah. The land was in chaos, according to the song of Deborah. Deborah the prophet, Deborah the mother. The land was in chaos and confusion. It had a negative impact on all aspect of their lives. Until I, Deborah, arose. Until I arose as a mother. It's not enough for you to be a prophet. It's not enough, ladies, for you to be likable, nice, sweet, compliant, nurturing. There is a posture called mother that every woman, with kids or not, is called to arise to. The chaos was there, not until Deborah arose as a prophet, because she was a prophet for, I think it was 40 years, I'm not sure, but it was a good long time. There was still chaos as she was a prophet, but until she arose as a mother, the scripture says, wow. A woman who is called, functioning, a leader, what was the turning point for the stopping of the chaos and the poverty and all of the bickering and the infighting? It wasn't the, pro it wasn't the, the presence of a woman. It was when a woman became the mother she was called to be. <clears throat> Powerful stuff. So here's, here's the admonition. Uh, don't be like Eve. Open to seduction. Did God really say? I know what he really meant. Hmm, yeah, let me think about that. See, it's not a big deal. I ate of the fruit, nothing happened. Here, honey, you compromise with me. That's Eve. Did God really say? Yeah, that had an impact. Went right into her. She could identify with that. Well, yeah, maybe God, did God really say? We don't have to think it through. We don't have to run it through a fresh interpretation. We don't have to make it relevant to, what, to our life today or our culture or our society. What did God say? Let's obey that. Let's not take what he said and run it through our filter of rationale and reasoning to see if it's really what he meant. Or maybe he exaggerated it. Or maybe he said it because he's jealous. It wouldn't have mattered if she'd have just listened. Yet instead, she came into agreement with that Jezebelian thing. It seduced her, and the seduced became the seductress to her husband and led him into the same temptation that she partook of. But he's the last survivor. 
by seducing him into eating the fruit like she did, thinking there was no effect. When the last surviving God-fearing person on the planet ate it, there was no one who could be redemptive left. So the fall took place when Adam went along with it. Eve was deceived. Adam just simply disobeyed and lost it for all of humanity until the last Adam, Jesus, came and gained it all back. Don't be like Eve. With Eve, the seduced became the seductress. With Deborah, the seducer, the devil, the enemy, the adversary, with Eve, she became seduced and actually became a seductress. With Deborah, the seducer encountered a mother. That's what makes the story of Deborah so powerful. The enemy of truth, the enemy of God's people, didn't just encounter a Christian. And I know they weren't Christians. This is Old Testament story. I got it. But in our day, when the enemy comes to ruin your family, to mess with what you know and believe, does he encounter, ladies, just you, a female Christian? Or does he encounter, uh-oh, I ain't messing with that. She's a mother. The mother is that protector. When the warrior is weak, she has the grace upon her as a mother to help the weak become strong. And she doesn't let him go. She stays connected, rides with him into battle if that's what it takes. She's courageous. She's bold. She's powerful. Here's the thing. Those who know their God will be strong and do exploits. That's a mother. She knows the Lord. Oh, she knows the Lord. She doesn't just know about him. She's walked with him. She's taken on the nature of Heavenly Father. She's strong. She's courageous. She's confident. And she... If her husband were to die, she can lead the family. If her husband chooses to abdicate, she will lead the family. Because she fears God enough where it cannot be another way. It cannot be another way. Someone has to lead the family in the fear of the Lord. And that's why the commandment with a promise. If it's going to go well for you and you live long on the earth... You need to honor not just your daddy, but your daddy and your mommy. You need to honor your mother and your father that it may go well with you. Ladies, when you arise, or perhaps you've already risen, you need to become confident and comfortable. You, not just comfortable, established in the fact that you are a mother. You have authority. Anything that comes into those that have been entrusted to your care, you have the responsibility, not just the power to do it, but the responsibility to tear off their heads and spit down their necks. How's that for just cutting through the crap? <laughs> When God spoke to Adam and Eve, he said to them, male and female, have dominion in the earth. Now, if it were Father's Day, <laughs> this would have a different flavor. Be speaking some things to the men, directly to the men, challenging the men, that if their wife chooses not to follow the Lord, or to lead the family in the fear of the Lord, then they have that responsibility to do it, right? But we're not talking to the men today. We're talking to your ladies. 
And when we talk to the men, we say, not only do you have the privilege and the, and, and the, the, the responsibility, but you have the God-given grace and wisdom to accomplish it. That everything we need for life and godliness has already been provided for us. We just need to get her done. Amen? All three were uncompromising. Abigail, Deborah, and Rebecca. Was a little sensuality good? No. What was it that uh, when the servant sent from Abraham to find a wife for his son Isaac went to the well? And he encountered Rebecca. She wasn't flirtatious. She wasn't dressed all sexy. She didn't need any of that. He understood her to be a God-fearing woman. She'd make a great mother. A little Harry Potter okay? No, it's not okay. Sorry. We practically had a church split over Harry Potter. But we're going we're gonna to toe the line. Even a little bit of it is not okay. I don't care if it helps your kids get excited about reading. How lame is that? A little sneaky, a little shady in their financial dealings. No, nope, they're not going not gonna to deal with that. A little tolerant of sexual deviance, sexual misconduct. No, no, we're not tolerant of any of that. We can't be. We're, we're watchmen on a wall. We're watchmen on a wall. Ladies, you're watchmen on a wall. I remember there was a, there was a girl, Josh, our son, dated. And, uh, boy, she, she loved to just show cleavage and shoulders and thighs and belly buttons and all of this and He'd go pick her up, and he'd say, I just, I just can't take you out dressed like that. Can you please just put on something more modest? Oh, her mother went ballistic. You, you never let a man tell you what to wear. And he's protecting her purity. He's encouraging her to be modest, and her own mom was encouraging her to dress like that. It's not a mother. That's an insecure woman who happens to have had children who still thinks showing herself off, putting herself on display is a good and acceptable thing. I relate to a fellow in Argentina, Noel, and his wife, Carolina. And uh, she is schooled, graduated, trained in fashion in Paris. But she is one of the most modest women, Carolina and Noel. There's nothing sexual, flirty, or sensual about her. But boy, she is a fashion genius. And it's such a rare combination because most of fashion is all about creating this sensual response. But she has really focused on beauty rather than sensuality. And I just wanted to shout out to her that even if you are fashionable, it's it's not acceptable Ladies, for you to say, well, it's, it's fashionable, so it's okay. No, it's not okay. We're not part of the kingdom of this world. We're part of the kingdom of our God and his Christ. We're part of the kingdom of God. That's where our value system lies. And modesty is a huge part. So we're not tolerant of those things. Moms, I want to empower you today. To be all the mom that God has called you to be. If you are faithful 
to overcome these things. The witchcraft. The sensuality. That's basically, uh, as the scripture talks about in the Revelation 2 or 3, the church of Thyatira, and just that Jezebelian influence. If they will overcome that, God will give them the nations. I just think of one of my heroes of faith, Marilyn Hickey. How many of you know the name Marilyn Hickey? What a wonderful, godly, modest, beautiful woman. She's got to be in her 80s now, I think. Maybe 90 even. And here is this vulnerable, innocent, cute older woman who has lived this God-fearing life. And in her 80s, and perhaps even 90, I don't know, but she's definitely through her 80s, um, God is opening up almost all the Muslim nations to her. Where here's this 80-year-old, cute as a button, God-fearing, live this wonderful, faith-filled life. And in her last days, wherever, wherever those might be, God's giving her the nations as an inheritance. And, she, and she'll, she'll go and she'll meet with the political leaders. And uh, they, they don't know why, but they give her permission. They, they offer her all the protection to hold these wonderful crusades Tens and tens and tens of thousands of people getting saved in these nations. And here's this God-fearing mother. She just has continued to emerge as a mother in the kingdom. What do you think? We always have more to attain to. And ladies, I want to encourage you. You are so blessed to be a lady. So blessed to be a woman. It is not a step down. It's not like many religious people have prayed, thank God I'm not a woman. You know, it's good to be a man. No, it's good to be whoever God made you to be. But there's always something to attain to that is glorious that is needed, that is faith-filled, that takes courage to rise to. But all of that is available to us, amen? So I want to commend you, all of you who have accepted this challenge already, all of you who know that you're still climbing that mountain to, to even a greater motherhood. May you not just be mothers to your families, not just mothers within this congregation, but mothers in the kingdom, mothers that God can send on assignment into nations, that he would give you nations. That's our heart for you. So he brought up the scripture, Prince of this World, um, having nothing in me, and I looked it up in the Amplified, and I felt like it was good to share. In the Amplified, uh, John 14, verse 30 and 31 I will not speak with you much longer, for the ruler of the world, Satan, is coming, and he has no claim on me, no power over me, nor anything he can use against me. Because he has no place in Jesus, because there is no darkness, because there is no sin, because there is no compromise in Jesus, then the devil has nothing he can use against him. And that's why we walk clean, and that's why we stand for the truth, and we do whatever we can over our children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, spiritual grandchildren, and children. Then verse 31, but so that the world may know without any doubt that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father has commanded me and act in full agreement with him. I do exactly as the Father has commanded me and act in full agreement of him.